Hello and thank you everyone for joining us for this very special Sip and Sail. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all our wonderful travel advisor partners and to our loyal guests and future guests who are joining us today on Facebook and on YouTube. Every few months, we love to get together and share wonderful River Cruise experiences, as well as highlights, what we have planned for our guests in the months ahead. And there is lots, lots to do in the months of ahead. Today, we are exploring the wine regions of France, and we are looking at our wonderful immersive river cruises to discover all the unique history and distinct food and wines from each of these beautiful regions. We have five different itineraries on the rivers in France that can be done individually or combined into your own personalized voyage. Today, we are going to highlight an extraordinary 28 night cruise to France with a focus on wine. And as a reminder, we have live multilingual moderators working behind the scenes to answer all your questions and comments. So today, your AMA Waterways hosts are Sebastian Leroy. Sebastian was for more than seven years one of our wonderful cruise managers on board our ships, and now is one of our business development managers here in the US, in fact, in Florida. So welcome, Sebastian. Thank you, Christine. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you for having me. And yours truly, Christine Karst. I'm one of the co-founders and co-owners of AMA Waterways. 20 years ago, we started this beautiful, beautiful journey. And I'm really, really happy that I also have very special guests today to join this fantastic sip and sail. And this is KK Avre. KK, you are one of our very loyal travel advisors and partners, and you are specialized in wine groups. You have done so many courses with us, your clients, so many over the course of all these years. So welcome to our special sip and sale. Oh, thank you so much. Delighted to be here. Look forward to talking about this great destination. Thank you so much. And Paul Wagner. Paul is a world renowned wine educator who has spoken at more than 80 international conferences and lectured numerous universities on the history, culture, and the marketing of wine. His personable approach and memorable stories make him one of our guest favorite wine hosts. And I would say, Paul, I know you are a celebrity and many of your friends know it, but you are so down to earth. It's always such a pleasure to have you. Welcome. Thanks. It's lovely to be here. I'm looking forward to this conversation. This cruise has been really a dream for me, and I really am excited about getting other people excited about it as well. It certainly is a once in a lifetime experience. And, you know, as many of you know, it always has been a tradition for us to start each sip and sail with a special toast even if it's a little bit early for some of us, especially here in California. But I heard, and actually I experienced, that tasting wine early in the day is recommended as your palate is very clean. So we started our celebration of wine cruises back in 2010 with just over 13 sailings. And today, we are proud to offer our guests over 60 departures sailing through Europe's most celebrated wine regions. Today, we are toasting a very special, never before offered 28 night wine cruise, exploring the four corners of France 
with five remarkable wine hosts. There are so, so many backdrops over vineyards and wineries, including the oldest vineyards in the world, to the fragrant perfume of the lavender fields of Provence, where our chefs love exploring local markets for the freshest ingredients of our daily menus and the slow, relaxing cruising between picturesque ports. And your wine hosts will be sharing their knowledge and wonderful stories as you explore these legendary wine regions. So wine is one of the most civilized things in the world and one of the most natural things of the world that has been brought to the greatest perfection. And it offers a greater range for enjoyment and appreciation than possibly any other purely sensory thing. And this quote is from Ernest Hemingway. And so we say cheers to all of you. My glass is filled with some sparkling this morning. Again, today I'm in California. Tomorrow I'm on my way to Europe. And uh, since we will be in France soon, we say santé. 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 Yeah. So before we dive into this very special sailing, KK, tell us, tell our audience, why do you enjoy working with Amar Waterways? Well, I'm not sure that my answer can just fit in the time span that we have because there are so many wonderful reasons why I love Ama Waterways. But sincerely, I'm sure just like all the past guests who are online with us today and all the travel advisors, we can all agree that there are so many exceptional traits that really sets Ama Waterways apart. For me, when I think of our wine enthusiasts, we tend to also be foodies. And the quality of the cuisine aboard Ama Waterways is quite frankly, exceptional. Uh, every meal is wonderful and thoughtful to the destination. The way your chefs delight in creating the wine pairing dinners. And of course, I love, love, love the regional surprises like the cheese tastings in France, the quality of the locally sourced products, they just really shine through. Um, the variety of the included tours, those small group sizes make such a difference. And the fact that you hire more guides than you even need just to make sure that everyone has that true immersive experience. So those who need maybe a little bit more time, those who are active, there's just so many choices. But I think it all sums up by saying the moment that you step aboard an Ama Waterway ship and you hear those words of welcome, not welcome, but welcome. It's, it's sincere, it, the sincerity and the genuineness from the crew, it's personal yet professional. I call it the AMA atmosphere. And when you're in it, you don't wanna leave. And when you're away from it, you can't wait to get back. So that's my shortened version. There are so many ways that we can all just say that we love AMA. Thank you so much, KK. And I know you and so many of your I should not say clients, it's guests, right? Yeah, it's the elevated hospitality uh, are part of your and our family joined together. So uh, it's it's a pleasure, thank you. I understand and that I, we have some great destinations to talk about. Oh, yes. We sure do, we sure do. Um, and if I may introduce a little bit, I mean, we will dive into, into all this in a few seconds. Um, but as you just mentioned, Christine, it is truly a unique, uh event tour discovery tour uh, and during these, these 28 nights uh, our guests will explore uh four rivers uh there will be 28 wine experiences uh that i believe will be very much enriched i had the chance to cruise with paul in the past uh so i can only imagine what the four others will bring so it will be very much enriched by five uh wine hosts just one little thing though, when you look at the ship, you know, uh, when you're in France, the rivers are a little smaller than the Rhine or the Danube, which means that we have a ship that has less capacity. What do I mean? Why do I say that? Because you will have, we will have only space for 144 guests. So, which makes me say that if you want to act, you better do this fast because I believe it will fill up very quickly. You have, um, um, when, you, when, you, when you think about it, uh, the, the tour itself, as you can see on the slide, um, it will be from April 20th to May 18th, uh, which is a great time of the year to, do, to visit France. I mean, as a French uh, myself, I should say that there is no bad time to visit France, but 
I would be a little <laughs> optimistic. Uh, but no, it, it's a great time of the year uh, to, to visit all these different regions. And, and another thing that is absolutely great is that when you will be on the Seine in Bordeaux, I mean, we'll start in Bordeaux, uh, but then on the Seine and on the Rhone and Saône rivers, the three ships are the same. Uh, so these are sister ships. And that, I think, is great for all our guests because, you, because basically you will not... You, you will not discover a new ship when you will search and not know where to go. No, you will leave one ship, you will go to the next, everything will be like before. Uh, you will have, the only difference will be that you will meet different crew members, but that will also be an enrichment in itself, I think. Thank you, Sebastian. I remember a couple of years ago, I was celebrating a round birthday actually in Bordeaux, the beginning of the season in April, and the trees were all in blossom. It is the best time, so authentic, so charming uh, before the high season really, really starts. But let's continue. Paul, you will be on board for this entire river journey. We feel truly, truly honored because I, I don't think anyone else can claim you for so long. You have lined up four impressive hosts who will be joining you along the way. Could you please introduce us to the wine hosts? Yeah, it's the, the wonderful thing about these hosts is that they are not only internationally recognized experts, but they're friends of mine. I like them. They're fun. They're interesting. They know how to tell a good story. Uh, Ray Isle is the um, executive wine editor for Food & Wine magazine. He's a James Beard uh, nominee, uh, has traveled extensively, wonderful guy based in New York. And then Sarah Schneider was the wine uh, writer, both for Forbes, um, I'm sorry, Rob Report and Sunset Magazine. She's based on the West Coasts and she will be joining us in Paris. In fact, she's talked about trying to bring one of her friends from Champagne on board to do a dinner for us in Champagne or in on the Seine. We'll see if she can pull that off. Tim Gazer, one of my best friends, is probably the world's leading expert on sensory analysis of wine. He is, in fact, in the process of publishing a book that is something like 700 pages of how to taste wine. And he starts from the very beginning of just look at it to the incredibly complex mental gymnastics we go through to remember wines, to think about wines. And then Scott Harper, wonderful fellow. Um, we have a tendency to think of sommeliers, master sommeliers, there are only 270 in the world as very refined, elegant people. Scott Harper played football in college. Uh, he's also a renowned bourbon expert. So a uh, very different approach, a lot of fun, um, and of course has that wonderful Louisville accent because that's where he's from. So each one of them brings a really different perspective. Each one of them is a lot of fun. And each one of them, I guarantee you, knows how to tell a good story about wine. <laughs> wow, quite a lineup, huh? <laughs> it is indeed. <clears throat> and yeah, Sebastian, and then, I know you want to explain us the first cruise here. Hmm? I, I, I would, it, that's, that's like KK said a few seconds ago. I mean, if I start explaining the first cruise, we, we'll finish this webinar in about five <laughs> days. But. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's no, I, I just would like to give a, a little introduction because this, as you, as you see, starts April 20th, uh, so April 20th to, to the 27th. So that will be, as uh, as Paul just mentioned, so with Paul and Ray uh, Isle, and it, it is a great place to start because, of course, you will be, you will arrive in Bordeaux, uh, well-renowned wine capital. Uh, you will visit different wine growing districts. I mean, you will go to the Medoc, you will go to uh, the, the Côte de Blay, you will visit really a lot of places, Graf, Sautéan, etc., etc. Uh, you will get great food, and I think that's something that has been mentioned already, but you will see these buffets that will be different from region to region, right? Uh, they will really help you. I mean, I don't, I don't know if anybody needs help drinking great wines, but uh, <laughs> they will help you appreciate the wines even more for what they are. I mean, when you will be in Poyac, or when you will be in Blay, or in Bourg, or in, or in Libourne, uh, that will be an absolutely, absolutely amazing trip. And of course, I was talking about these different ones, but I, I, we will go to Sauterne as well. And Sauterne, uh, so that's why they call it this, this liquid gold, right? This, this very uh, nice, sweet uh, wine that the region is famous for. So really a nice, a nice way to start. And look at this beautiful backdrop, the beautiful historic buildings along Bordeaux's waterfront. 
really the entrance to the renewed wine country. Absolutely amazing city. Yeah, and it has gone through a complete renaissance from 25 years ago. Um, it is full of life, it's full of fun, um, and we're featuring those wines. I, over the years, have represented the Union de Grand Cru de Santo Milion, the Union de Grand Cru de Bordeaux, the Union de Grand Cru de Sauterne and Barzac. So we're going to be tasting exactly those wines. Um, it is, it is, these are some of the greatest wines in the world. They are legendary wines. They're wines that Thomas Jefferson not only purchased for his own self, but he also encouraged George Washington to buy some for the White House. So we are, we are tasting wines that have a 250 year connection with, with the American market and they don't get any better. As Sebastian says, this is one of the crown jewels of the world of wine. Wow, very, very impressive. Um, so Saint Emilion, actually one of my personal favorites when it comes to this itinerary, and it's Bordeaux's most elite wine region. The whole medieval town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and one of its most renowned sites is a monolithic church carved out from a single limestone rock in the 12th century. So, um, KK, please tell us about your own reflections on Saint Emilion, the beauty. Maybe you did the bike tour down the vineyards uh, into the beautiful city. There is so much to do. There is so much to do. And you're quite right, Christine, that the, it is just so strikingly beautiful. One of the stories that I love, um, you know, I've traveled with Paul several times, and one of the stories he always reminds me, and I think of this when I go on the bike ride down through the vineyards or one of the hikes through the vineyards, which I really, really love, um, is that the, the vineyards themselves, they are actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So uh, the first, if I recall correctly, Paul, you can correct me, but uh, when I think of going down on that bike ride and you see all the vineyards around you, this wonderful little town, and then of course, we go up to the chateau and we have the Grand Cru tasting. Um, one of my favorite parts is the fact that we bike there and ride back, uh, meaning <laughs> that we don't have to bike back after all the tastings, uh, but it is such a great experience. Again, one of my favorite things is the fact that we can, whether we're active or, or slow walkers, you have all these great options and it's a wonderful way to see this beautiful, beautiful little town. Thank you. And I know, Paul, you want to talk about Poyak. Well, Poyak is the, the heart of, of Bordeaux's great wine country. Three of the five first growth red wines come from Poyak and within meters of each other. Uh, and when you think about Chateau Latour, Chateau Lafitte, Chateau Mouton Rothschild, this is, uh, these are the greatest red wines in the world. They all come from right here. Uh, what a treat that we actually get to dock the boat in Poyac um, to, to visit these, these wineries, visit these vineyards, taste these wines. It's, um, it's as good as it gets. How many of these bottles do you have in your own <laughs> wine <laughs> cellar? And I know some I, of these I, are several thousand dollars. Hmm? Yeah, the, the, in fact, most of these wines, by the time they get to the US, the first growths, um, probably cost about $1,000 a bottle. But in fact, for example, Chateau Lafitte Rothschild owns two other classified gross in, in Poyac, uh, Darmillac and, and, and Milan Rothschild, and they are, um, Duart Milan, and they are much more affordable, made by the same basic team, delicious wines. So one of the things we're going to be exploring is not just these, this is the territory of the world's greatest wines, but also there are some really affordable wines in this same region that offer terrific value and terrific flavor. That's yes, we could talk we could talk about about Vordo for ages, but let's go uh, uh, let's go in <laughs> another region that is that is very interesting to me on the on the wine trip because that's probably and that's where I'm from. That's probably the only region of France where you have absolutely no wine, but. <laughs> it has a magnificent river. I mean, France is not only about wine. I know it will be focused on wine, but we have so many things to talk about. And this part, and, and there are actually wine areas all around the Seine River. So we will still be able to enjoy absolutely amazing wine. So that will be the same, the second leg. That will start on April 27th. It will go to May the 3rd. Uh, so that will be on board the Amalera with, uh, so 
Paula could, but I mean, with Sarah uh, Schneider, who will be there, um, that will be uh, a trip that will take you from Paris to my hometown, Le Havre, and then back. Uh, there is a lot, a lot to discover on this beautiful river. Wow. So we sail along the Seine River and we experience the romance of Paris, the city of lights. Who does not want to be in Paris again and just, you know, enjoy the summer we were tasting all the champagnes there as well. And then, of course, we will also go to the Normandy with its stunning coastline, incredible cuisine, seafood, artistic beauty, and of course, uh, for the history, um, fans, uh, everything about the beaches of the Normandy when we dive back into history. Um, but I also enjoy this itinerary because of things that you can taste in addition to the wine, the cider, the Calvados. Uh, I enjoy cycling there. It's the region for the Camembert. I always say the sweet seas and so, so much more. So, Paul, please tell us about our exclusive wine experience on the Seine River. Well, Sebastian has it exactly right. This is not an area that produces a lot of wine, but it's in the middle of three fabulous regions. First of all, Champagne. And I don't think I need to explain Champagne. Um, but just imagine April in Paris with a glass of Champagne and you are on the Seine cruising the river. And that's something you're going to write. Your, that's something you're going to tell your grandchildren about. Um, and then the other two regions, for me, Alsace is an absolute jewel of a wine region, doesn't get near the attention it should get. The wines are absolutely world class. They go with stunning food. And the third region is in some ways the most diverse wine region in France. Everything from bone dry, sparkling wine, wines that go with shellfish, to incredibly rich, sweet dessert wines, red wines, rosé, my favorite rosé, the rosé that I drank when I fell in love with my wife comes from the Loire Valley. So all of that um, is within, within pitching distance of the Seine, and we're going to bring those wines on board to taste during this fabulous week. April in Paris, Champagne, Loire, Alsace. Sounds pretty good to me. There are the French Impressionists. KK. <laughs> Oh, this is one of my favorite ports of call, and and I have to tell you a quick little story because you know I mentioned about the guides earlier and how they, what a difference they make because they're such nice small groups. Uh, we were on a tour to Giverny and. Um, several of us were walking and talking about how excited we were to see the Monet Gardens, and we arrived there. We're standing at the, you know, just basking in the beauty, right? Because it's so gorgeous. And our guide comes up to me and she says. I heard you mention that you've been taking painting classes. And I said, oh, yes. I said, I'm very excited. I've been taking watercolor, and, and, and this just so amazes me. And she says, come here. I want to show you something. And so we walk over to the edge of the bridge, and she says, now crouch all the way down. So we're crouching down. And suddenly, there was this perspective that I would have never seen. It was stunning. The colors were just contrasting. And the reflections were amazing. I never would have seen that. But she took that special time. She had just heard a little tidbit about us conversing about painting and made that different. I will tell you, when you come to this destination, um, in addition to, of course, the Monet Gardens, there's so much to see, but this is a real highlight. And I love, of course, the way the guides make such a difference with every port of call. Yes, it is a beautiful region. I mean, I mean, Giverny, of course, is amazing. You will visit, you will visit a lot of places. I mean, there because we talk about history when we talk about Normandy, and of course, the first thing that comes to mind are the World War II landing beaches. But pretty much every day, every destination that you will see, you will go to Les Anglis, and then you will see the largest fortress built by uh, Richard the Lionheart. So you, I mean, you will see really 10, 12 centuries of history right there. But you will also need to enjoy. We mentioned that there was no wine. Well, that's not totally true because <laughs> uh, as good French people, French people try to make wine with everything they find, which means, Christine, you mentioned the cider, so which is the hard cider, right? Um, then we have the Calvados, so which would be basically the distilled form uh, of, what we, of what we do. There. But you have an in-between and we call it pomo, uh, and the pomo is the apple wine. So you will be able to enjoy all these uh, 
delicacies and and as you mentioned earlier i mean with a nice camembert or polybeck or livao i mean they, they're all um there's one thing that you don't want to do in normandy is to count calories i mean actually i would not count any calories on the four weeks in this case uh, <laughs> but you know uh, a good camembert we always say uh it starts with 55 percent fat just just to start to paint the picture here uh so great absolutely great tastings uh in Rouen and, and every, everywhere you will go, for sure. You only live once, and I think we have to taste the different flavors that are existent in our beautiful world. And then, of course, I also mentioned history, and uh, an unforgettable day is in store for you when you tour the American sector of these historic beaches, including the cemetery at colville sur mer and Omaha Beach, or when you venture to the Gold and Juno beaches of the British and Canadian sectors, encompassing the Rongville Cemetery, Pegasus Bridge, and World War II Museum in Corazel. Either way, you will also visit Aromanche, where the remains of the floating harbor used during World War II landing can be seen. So, there is really something for everyone to explore. But I know we need to move on to the next beautiful and so different um, experience in another part in France. So yes. PK. This is a great itinerary. So this is really a, well, it is a custom designed itinerary for the next 14 days in two separate segments. So if you can imagine that we're going to, of course, start in chalon sur saint and work our way south down to Arles. Uh, that's the May 4th through the May 11th. And our guest lecture there, of course, is Master Sommelier, uh, Tim Gazer, and what stories he can tell. Just like Paul, I love the interaction between them. So just wait for the stories that will come along with that. But then, of course, the ship is going to make its way back up north uh, from Arles to chalon sur saint again. And the great part here is that there are unique, different ports on each of these seven uh, days. Of course, the host for the second portion will be another master sommelier, Scott Harper. So once again, you have great authorities on wine um, with unique destinations. And these itineraries, while they look like they're going up and down the same river, the ports of call, the visits are very, very different. That's also, that's also when you look at all these places um, that you will be visiting. I mean, well, of course, there will be great wines. And I know Paul We'll talk about them in a few seconds, but uh, you know, when, when the ship will make its way south and then north again, I mean, you will visit places like Lyon. I mean, Lyon, because many people, when they don't know France, they think Paris, and then Paris being the capital, they think capital equals food capital. No, in our case, Lyon is the food capital, and you will see that there is a very big difference between the, I mean, what, what French people call um, good food, but then you will have um, various parts of history again. I mean, the Rhone and Saône valleys, I mean, you have over 2,600 years of history. And when you will be in Avignon, uh, you will be even in a place where you will arrive, your ship will be docked just in front of a very famous bridge, and it's called Pont saint benezet I'm not going to sing, you don't want to, you want to have a nice day. <laughs> uh, but uh, you will see then a fortress, and that's the Papal Palace. And that's actually where the papacy uh, for pretty much two thirds, until uh, 67 years, so two thirds of the, of the uh, 14th century, that's where the papacy was uh, displaced uh, due to, and you will learn all that, as, as KK mentioned, the guides will tell you, your cruise managers, trust me, or your cruise manager in this case, because you will have one person, uh, uh, knows a lot about the destination, so feel free to pick their brains also. Uh, and then you will also sample different wines, uh, uh, from, from different region, uh, whether you go south or north. You also see one little place that I really love. It's in Bonn, it's called Les Hospices de Bonn. It's a beautiful, beautiful, magnificent uh, ancestor to a, what we nowadays would call a, a hospital. Um, and I'm not going to go too much in detail. You will need to discuss, because I could show you, we could show you pictures. The truth is that you need to be there. So there's a lot to see. <laughs> Yeah, and of course, you know, uh, Christina was talking about the the wine as being so enjoyable. I always say that 
uh, of all of the arts, wine is the most intimate expression of art because it is the one work of art that we don't just look at, we don't just, we don't just taste, we actually put it inside our bodies. It becomes part of us. Uh, and to me, that's what makes wine different from all the other arts. We're traveling through Burgundy. We get to start in Burgundy and, and, and head south. We go through the Rhone, uh, as, as um, Sebastian mentioned, Chateauneuf du Pape. I think uh, on, uh, on labels shipped to America, it's good that they don't call it Newcastle of the Pope. Um, but those are uh, among the world's greatest wines. We get down into Provence where we can taste, again, an, a region that is absolutely exploding in wine quality. Um, so we, we have that wonderful journey down and then we get to turn around and come back up visiting different wineries, tasting different things. On, on, the, on the way south, we'll taste Macon and Beaujolais, we'll taste red burgundies. On the way north, we'll taste white burgundies. Um, just making sure you get to experience every possible combination of these wines. And again, my wife is a professional chef. Um, she still says the best food she's ever had on a cruise was on Ama Waterways, and I think it's important to note that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's a very nice compliment. But I also want to say, knowing that we, you know, have meals with chateau owners in, uh, you know, in Macong and, you know, the surprise of Burgundy while in Arles, I think that's also such a beauty that, you know, we come together with, with these you know, special people in France, they all have a story to tell. And I, what I also like along the road, there are many family owned wineries. Mm -hmm. I remember a couple of years back, uh, we were just a small group going to the small winery um, because they couldn't host a large group. And um, the winemaker, the owner welcomed us in the kitchen. And then he took us to the bedroom and he opened the last bottle of his wine. It was called Isabel. That was his daughter. And he shared it just with our small group. And we were diving back into his family history. I think those are just these beautiful things that you just cannot experience anywhere else. So thank you mm -hmm. for, for really being with us all the way. And, uh, and I hope many of you, our travel advisor, partners and friends and uh, our clients and guests, uh, you see how much um, not just value is in this, but so much magic, so many memorable moments that you will keep for the rest of your life. And I think the last two and a half years have all taught us um, that it's important to live today because we live from the memories, the memories we made on previous trips. And now we cannot wait to really explore the world. And in this case, beautiful France again. But Paul, I know uh, you want to also reflect a little bit on um, Beaujolais. A greatly misunderstood wine region. Um, make some absolutely magical wines. And unfortunately, the Duke of Burgundy years and years ago declared that the grape they grow in Burgundy should never be grown, the grape they grow in Beaujolais should never be grown in Burgundy because it was a bastard of a grape. And the Beaujolais, in fact, paid no attention to him, continued to plant the, the grape and make absolutely wonderful wines from very light, fresh wines that many people know as Beaujolais Nouveau. But the, the, um, the, the more vineyard specific or commune specific wines of Beaujolais are wonderful wines. They age quite well in a good year. And so we'll get a chance to experience really Beaujolais in much greater depth than you might think from going to your local wine shop and saying, give me a bottle of Beaujolais. That, that's a little bit like saying, give me a bottle of California wine. There's a huge spectrum there and we'll get to explore the whole thing. Well, I think everyone who's coming back will be a wine expert and uh, <laughs> after this. So in addition to all the experience is so much about education and education in a fun way. And now look at this colorful picture of Leong. Uh, I'm, I'm really, honestly, I'm getting hungry right now. Um, we all know 
that Lyon is the gourmet capital of the world, but it also boasts incredible architecture that spans the centuries. So its UNESCO designed old city is brimming with museums and churches, but the real draw still is food and wine. After all, again, Lyon is known as the gourmet capital of France. So Sebastian, tell us a little bit more about Lyon. I know you touched on it before. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's really a great picture. Uh, I actually the one in the middle is taken from from the top of the basilica. It's it's really great because you have the, these two rivers that go through Lyon. Huh? They meet uh, the Rhone and the Saone rivers uh, meet in Lyon. And when we say when we say that um, it is a gourmet capital, I mean we have to think about the fact that there are uh, a dozen, I think, Michelin, or, or maybe more. I mean, it changes all the time, but I mean, you have Michelin restaurants everywhere. You had, I mean, a name. I mean, if everybody talks about Paul Bocuse, he passed away a few years ago, but um, everybody will remember. And, and then, you know, the, the, the legacy that he has down there is, is absolutely amazing. But what I really like, and, and, and I really encourage everybody, because our, our guests will spend time there. And as great as the food on the ship is, when you have the time, to go and enjoy in town, do that. You go in a bouchon, and the, the bouchon. So the bouchon lyonnais is is is, a, is very specific to that. Actually, it's called bouchon lyonnais because you will find them in Lyon. Um, these are little family-owned restaurants, family-operated restaurants. I always say when you go in the Vieux Lyon, which is just at the bottom of uh, of the of the basilica, and and so we take guests there, and you will have streets with many of them. And I always tell my guests. Um, if you see that it looks like too nice, you know, too straight, don't go there. If it looks a little messy, not straight, uh, it's clean, of course. And they're all clean. That's not a problem. But if it's messy, small, that's where you want to go because that's that's the one that has been there for a very long time and it's there for a very good reason. Um, and, and people love it. I remember one time, I'm, I don't even know that. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows the writer Mary Higgins Clark. I had the chance to have Mary Higgins Clark with me on board the ship. And she asked me, she's like, can, can you find me a place? I'm like, oh, yeah, I will find you a place. And she was there in the middle of Lyon. Nobody knew who she was. She had her little salad mayonnaise with the lardon, et cetera, et cetera. She came back to the ship. She loved it. And, and you, you will enjoy that, too. It's, it's absolutely superb. You will have the wines. I mean, you'll have, uh, because there are truly a lot of wine regions uh, on the Rhone River, very small. Huh? You will have also the Côte Rotis. Côte Rotis is just south, actually, of Lyon. Uh, some of them will have that. You will have, uh, if you continue a little bit south towards Valence, you will have the Claret de Dix. Uh, and then, as Paul mentioned earlier, the Chateau Neuf du Pape, etc. So there will be a lot to discover. You will have the cheeses. I mean, in France, we have, we say that we have over uh, 400 cheeses and uh, uh, sorts of cheeses. So that's one cheese per day or more. <laughs> so there will be, there will be uh, per day of the year. So there will be a lot to discover there. Well, yeah, and, and I'm Follow up um, on what Sebastian said there. When you go into those little uh, bouchon, those little cafes, one of the things you'll discover is you're an American, you're going out to lunch, so you might have a salad, um, but you look around you, and the reason those restaurants can survive is because all the local Lyonnais, they are not having a salad for lunch. They are sitting down with a first course, a second course, they will have dessert secretaries from the local office building, managers, real estate, uh, they, and they are drinking the wine. Um, and that's at lunch. Now, um, if I did that at home, I would sleep the afternoon away. Somehow the Lyonnais go back to work and work for another four or five hours. So it's how, it's, it's how those restaurants stay in business. They have a dedicated clientele of people who really know food and wine. Um, again, same sort of thing. And Sebastian, one of my favorite parts of, of these cruises is when you start in Lyon and you head south, you get, yes, Cote Roti, but then it's like going through a wine textbook, Hermitage, yeah. uh, 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 Croze Hermitage, Saint Joseph. You just click them off and each one of them you recognize and you say, it's the easiest way to learn about wine. Having said that, I really want to make it clear, this is not a wine education cruise. This is a cruise about the enjoyment of wine. And yes, we will give you information, but our most fervent wish is not that you come home having memorized 
the Appalachians in Beaujolais, but rather that you come home and tell your friends, wow, did we have some great wines? Did we have discover some great Appalachians? Let's go to the store and see what we can find that might be along the same lines. The whole goal here is not, my, my brother's an expert in education and he has a wonderful line. He says, great teachers don't cover a subject. Great teachers uncover a subject. And this cruise uncovers the wine regions of France. Well, and you know, I'm gonna to add to that because I've sailed with you before. And when I first started this, I knew nothing about wine. And I was so intimidated thinking, how will I enjoy a wine cruise when I really don't know anything? And I will just attest to the fact that these gentlemen that you're sailing with, they are so patient. They they speak to whatever level you are at. So the wine enthusiasts can have these really in-depth conversations. And yet those of us who are a little bit more novice can ask those questions and not feel a little silly for asking and learn so much because you're there experiencing it. It's not like you're going to an education to a class, you're actually experiencing it. So when they say, look at the color, look at the swirl, stick your nose in it, you learn so much, but at the same time, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you bring it all to life. Well said. All right, here is the little bridge I mentioned earlier. So, the, so that's the Pont Saint-Benet. So that's Avignon. Uh, so one, uh, one of the most beautiful towns that, that you will find in the area, completely surrounded by the wall, the wall that's the third wall actually in history. Uh, and it's, it's intact. What you see at the top of the picture on the left, that's Notre Dame des Dons. So that's the cathedral that is right next actually uh, to the to the palace of the popes. I, it's just one little thing that I want to say about Avignon because we have, I mean, of course we know that there is the, the super famous like the theater for, annual theater festival, uh, or you, you may not know it, but now you know it. Um, uh, but it, it also is a great city because we did not talk about that, believe it or not, in all these places for shopping. Uh, the shopping in the Rue Saint Agricole uh, in, in Avignon is absolutely superb, so you will enjoy that. Uh, but it has uh, it is a, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Actually, there are multiple just uh, just in Avignon. Uh, it is a city that uh, that is very interestingly attracting people, but not growing because it is actually contained in these walls. The walls are protected by the UNESCO, so you cannot build high rises or anything. So it's a, it's a city that stays how it's always been. Uh, you walk along the River Rhone. It's it's absolutely a, a great area to visit. Uh, amazing wines too. I mean, like very small appellations, uh, very close to it, all around it. Uh, Vaqueas, uh, Gigondas, all these areas are, are absolutely mm -hmm. superb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and one thing we haven't mentioned, Sebastian, is Valrhona chocolate. I don't know if I'm going to have any money to spend in Avignon because if we stop. In every time in retage there, I'm going to spend all my money at the chocolate tasting uh, at the Valrona chocolate factory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> Dark chocolate and red wine. Hmm? Oh, well, and then, of course, we've been talking so much about food. This is one of my favorite ports, too, because I just love taking the excursion to the truffle farm. And we get to visit the farmers and their trustworthy canine companions in search of the highly prized black diamond truffles. It's a wonderful complimentary tour. And of course, it's not just about what we taste, but what we bring home. Because when you talk about spending and shopping, I did a fair share of that every time I've taken this excursion. But I also love the fact that we're getting out and away from the towns themselves, a little bit out into the countryside. So you experience a little bit of France that you might not otherwise see. This is one of my favorite tours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, shopping has become so affordable now. The dollar is so high up against the euro. But of course, uh, we are also um, very honored uh, to be members of La Chaine de Rote des and Table d'Auberge de France Culinary Societies. Uh, so this really reflects the skill set of our chefs. Um, they get invited to join these prestigious organizations. You cannot buy your way in. And um, we have, in addition to our Chaine de Rotisseur nights, uh, an evening at our chef's table 
speciality restaurant. So this is a complimentary evening paired by the finest wines. Again, it's a tasting menu. And uh, I'm very proud, Paul, about what your wife said, uh, your wife's experience uh, with the food on board. But I also heard actually some of our guests saying that an evening at chef's table compares to an evening at the French Laundry in Napa Valley. Just, it's included. And I'm sure you have been many times at the French Laundry. You know what the price tag is. But tell us from your side, you know, how do you feel about the cuisine and how we indulge in, you know, the French local cuisine, the freshest ingredients, all of these things. You are the expert, Paul. Well, I, I completely agree. And in fact, one of the things that is always a delight, the day starts perfectly because the day starts with fresh pastries made on board. And, and right off the bat, again, my wife was a pastry chef. And the first morning we got up and we had pastries on board and she looked at me and she said, this is going to be special. Uh, and literally at every meal, um, one of the things I actually prize very highly is that the portions are reasonable. Um, you, your food is not a question of giving massive amounts of food, but each dish is appropriately sized. You can afford to taste things. Again, this is all about exploration. So I want to order everything, but it's it, it's not a question of, okay, good, we have the the 22 ounce steak and the 48 ounce steak. No, no, no. These are reasonable portions. So you can taste a little of this. You can taste a little of that. The wines are great. The onboard wines are great in addition to the ones we're bringing on board. And I have to give a shout out to the sommeliers and the service staff because on every, on every cruise I've ever taken with AMA, the sommeliers are knowledgeable. They're smart. They're friendly. They know how to talk to people. Um, they're exactly who you want to be your little guide when you sit down at dinner and say, what's, what's the show tonight? <laughs> and there will be different shows during this uh, four-week itinerary because you will have, and you come on board and be part of this cruise a couple of nights at the chef's table. Yep. And of course, um, it wouldn't be an Ama Waterways River Cruise without our sparkling crew, not just the sparkling in the champagne, but our sparkling crew. Um, we are very, very passionate about our people. We are very lucky and fortunate to have each and every one as part of our Ama Waterways family, because even with the most beautiful ships in um, the most fantastic regions of the world, without the human approach and the gentle um, way of them always foreseeing what you like and anticipate your next needs, uh, you would not enjoy this experience. It, the devil is always in the detail, as we say. And our cruise managers and our crew members are truly the heart of our river cruises. They create the AMA atmosphere. They really do. It's one family. Well, they do. They do. But like now let's talk a little bit about the cruise itself and what's included. Because, I mean, it, we've did, now we've we, we, we painted the picture a little bit. We started. Um, but, but when you think about it, we're talking 28 nights. Okay. We're talking three ships. So uh, there will be one cruise manager who will be with you all the time. We and then when it comes to such long experience and you change the ship, uh, the gratuities will be included. This way you don't have to worry about it. Uh, laundry is included. The transfers between the ships are included. And and and. But to me, the most important, and that I guess that's the former cruise manager that's speaking now, is is that the tours. And you mentioned it KK, multiple times. Is that all the tours are included? It's not one per day or one per port or something else. No. If you have three tours in a day, you want to do one in the morning, a bike, and then a bike tour in the afternoon, and go somewhere else in the evening. Be my guest. That's why, that's why they are here, um, and people love that this flexibility because we talk about all these included tours, yes, but you will also have some of you who one day will say like, I don't want to go on a tour today. Well, great. Then enjoy your ship. You have your your private yacht for yourself. The crew is here. It's it's your home away from home. 
Um, and that, that, that makes a big difference. That will make this, this uh, voyage uh, very enjoyable, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, and some of the... If, if I could add something to that, Sebastian, so often the ship is, is docked somewhere where it, even if you've been in that town before, even if you have taken a, a tour at some point, the fact that you can just get off the ship Avignon. Um, Tim Gazer and I were there on the on the on an AMA Waterways cruise, and it and on the day we were in Avignon, Tim turned to me. He said, "Paul, I was raised a Catholic. There's only one thing I really want to see in Avignon." And we spent all day visiting the Chateau Neuf du Pape, the the Papal Palace, uh, because it was literally 50 meters from the ship. We just walked off. We did what we wanted all day. We came back in the evening, and we had a wonderful time. Well, and I love how on this particular cruise, there are over 22 wine-themed shore excursions. So those yep. who are really interested in the wine have such a great opportunity to really dive in and be sensory, be there, be experiencing that in, in the place. Um, so there's all those. And then, of course, for maybe someone who is not as into wine, maybe a companion or someone, there's all these other great options that we were talking about. So there's lots of value uh, surrounding this, the elevated tours that because of this is one of your grand cruises, it elevates everything. Um, we talk about the the laundry that's included, uh, those extra little touches. You know, you're going away for 28 days. The fact that you have a bag of laundry included every week, I think, is a wonderful touch. Um, <laughs> and of course, the Wi-Fi, all the things that we kind of know and love and expect. Um, but the gratuities in this particular case are both for the crew staff as well as the land staff. So lots of elevated experiences on this particular cruise. And you know, when you see there on the picture, it says value of about $2,100. I tend to think it's much more than that, but okay, we'll say $2,100. I just think there's, um, again, this is a unique experience. It's a one-time only. So um, my heart, when I listen to all of your tales, speaks of all of the various experiences, pulling them all together creates a unique value. I have to tell you a quick little story. Um, I recently had a, a guest return from a domestic river cruise. Um, I'll be a little generic here to say, uh, but they spent $12,000 for a one week cruise. And they were so disappointed coming home. They felt that it was just kind of, I don't know, there was mediocrity. It wasn't, it wasn't wow. And when I hear of you talking about how we're immersing in this destination, we're going to Europe, we're finding a depth of quality, all the inclusions that you talked about, now that's value. That shows that this cruise, to me, is a tremendous value. I, I'm very excited about it. I'm ready. I'm, I'm actually thinking of all the, um, the wonderful tastes um, that I'm going to have, whether it be from consuming the chocolates and the cheeses and the seafood and, of course, all that fantastic wine. But also, I think it's about having 28 days of the AMA experience, just indulging in being spoiled. Um. KK, I mean, this means so much to us what you are saying because you are pretty much promoting um, dreams to go, you know, to every part in the world. We do river cruises. We focus on river cruises and that's all what we do. Now, I want to say some of the transfers here between uh, the ships are done by TGV. So you yeah. get also <laughs> the TGV experience, of course, escorted by our cruise managers you don't have to do the TV, TGV alone. If you don't know the language, it might be a little bit difficult sometimes, right? But we take care of everything and give you this fabulous experience. And, and I know, um, you know, how, how much as a product, KK, you are selling because you're doing a lot. Um, but I'm very, very honored that you are on this with us and uh, that you have done so many of our wine courses in the past, which made, made you really truly an expert um, for AMA Waterways, but also for um, the different wine course areas. And um, again, for us, it's, it's, we are very, very proud to have you. And at the same time, Paul, we are extremely proud to have you here. Um, you. How many courses have you done with us in the past? Ooh, Can you count? At least five. At least, at least five. five, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. 
and so many was different one, regions. Well, was that in one year, maybe, or? <laughs> with us right because i think your heart is in france this is such a beautiful part of the world and i'm not just saying this sebastian because you were born in france and i, I was born in germany and i agree germany is maybe it's beautiful but in certain areas less charming than france uh, france has this special special touch and all the different areas of france um they are just not alike to each other. We think about France as one country, but it is more than one country. So many different religions, so many different you know, ways how people see life, the different history, different buildings, different wines, uh, and so much more. So yeah, I actually, I know you will be selling out. We will be selling out. If we are not, I try to really reserve this time to be on this cruise as well. I mean, this is an amazing <laughs> cruise. But let's come to our questions and answers. Otherwise, I'm talking too much here. So, okay, we got some questions, very interesting questions here. And I will start with the first one and then uh, I will hand it over. So question number one is, if I can make this date, but I would love to do two or three weeks in France, is this possible? And is it easy to transfer from one river to the other? So absolutely, it is possible. Um, we start on the same day um, embarkation. This embarkation, let's say, if you do a Rhone cruise, you start in Avignon, you finish in Lyon, you could take the TGV to Paris, uh, but you are on your own pretty much, right? You could join, of course, our Seine cruise then on your disembarkation day on the Rhone, it's your new embarkation day on the Seine, so you don't really, really lose time. Um, but you're not escorted, you're pretty much on your own. And I believe this is a huge value when we take care of everything. And um, on one of the other Sebenziel hours, one of the guests actually said they booked their pre-land program on their own, but they had friends, they booked the pre-land program with Amar Waterways. They had to slap all their luggage and suitcases. We took care of everything. That is already a part of the value you want to be with the group. It is possible but I would recommend you to definitely look at this beautiful cruise. So I would, I would just like to support that because when you talked about the TGV, one of the things that I think frightens most people is doing it independently is lugging your luggage. And when Ama does this, all your luggage goes ahead. You never, you don't touch it. Um, there's someone who hosts you right to the train station. You get this fun experience that we don't have here in the States of taking the TGV across. All of the transfers, when everything that I've read uh, on this particular cruise, everything is seamless. And I think that's really important to understand. Uh, but to your point, um, you know, the segments uh, I understand are not going to be open until mid-November. Right now, only the full cruise is available. But I think you're going to be able to, to wait list for segments later on. Yes, of course, for this cruise here. Yes, absolutely. Yes, thank you, KK. And the next question, Sebastian, actually, I would like to direct to you. So the question is, I'm a solo traveler. Do you think I would enjoy this type of journey? Uh, so short answer would be yes, definitely. Uh, but if I can extend expand a little bit on that, uh, we have, and I say we really, because from day one when I arrived in the company, uh, which is a decade ago now, um, we've always emphasized on our solo travelers and, and it's not only it's not only about arriving on your own i mean by essence a solo traveler doesn't know anyone but then from the moment you arrive uh you we will we, what we do is that we invite our guests uh the first evening you know because we, usually you don't have one solo traveler you will have three five six but god knows um so what we do is that we will have a dinner first uh, so that at least these people who know no one but they have already a first contact and then they get in touch with the crew manager, with with everybody. Uh, when it comes to the tours, we're always very careful. One even a little detail in the restaurant uh, just before going to the tours. Uh, in our restaurant, when, when you think about it, you have tables for two, for four, for eight. 
but we also have tables with five and seven. I mean, we have we have odd numbers, and and that's very important because we all know that there's nothing more weird than being at a table of six and you have one empty seat. So just these details that we take care of. I like uh, I, I used to like and I still like to talk to my guides uh, when we start a tour and you, we mention who are the solo travelers because because the solo traveler when the tour finishes, you know, when you have some free time. Um, they might have some different interests, uh, you know, compared to other people who might just go for a glass with the spouse and, and discuss what they've seen. Some soul travelers actually can be more adventurous. Most of the time they are. So we pay attention to, to all these details. And the truth is that they are adopted immediately by, you, you make friends immediately. I mean, I've never seen, yeah. and I don't think I'm really, I really think about that. I've never seen somebody, you know, starting the cruise alone and finishing the cruise alone. That, that does not happen. Um, so yes, if you want to do that as a solo traveler, please join because you will have a great time. Thank you, Sebastian. And the next question goes to KK. Uh, can we book our airfares through AMA Waterways for this cruise? And what are the benefits of doing it with them? Everything is taken care of by AMA Waterways, I could say, because I'm representing AMA Waterways, but I want to hand it over to you. How do you feel? Well, I think seamless vacation end to end is one of those things that we all desire, right? And and it, when you talk about whether it be the pre-cruise um, that you mentioned earlier, that you arrive in Paris, there's someone to greet you, someone who uh, has a, a sign with your name on it that just makes you feel special from moment one, and the seamlessness, pulling it all together. But take it a step further back. Uh, today, Airlines are a little bit tumultuous sometimes, and knowing that AMA Waterways has confirmed your air, um, has they already know when you're coming, when you're arriving, if there's any hiccups, uh, there's someone watching over your flights. All of those little details really make the difference. So when you talk about an end-to-end -end vacation, that really talks about the moment you leave your home until the time you return again. Why not put it in the hands of someone who can make it really easy for you? So I do encourage, highly encourage, both pre-post, Ama Air, the whole package. It's well done. And truthfully, it's also a great value. I just have to add that too. Um, it, it is really a great value. And I'm going to piggyback on what Sebastian said about solos. Uh, personally, we have so many solo passengers with Ama Waterways and they love, love, love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Peace of mind again, right? And, and Paul, the next question goes to you. My husband is a wine lover but I'm not. Will I still be able to enjoy this 28-night cruise? Um, no question about it. it. I love, when I teach my introductory wine classes, I always quote uh, Johannes Kepler, a scientist from the 1500s, who said, we explore the world using only our five senses, and we call the result science. That's what wine is. We are exploring using the five senses. And we're doing the same thing on this cruise, whether it be looking at the water lilies that Monet painted, whether it's smelling the lavender fields or the truffles. I'm sorry, if you want anything from me, all you have to do is wave truffles and I will follow you. Um, we taste the chocolate in Valrona. Um, we taste the cheese. This isn't wine. But these are sensual experiences that you'll remember for the rest of your life. And when you approach wine that way, not as a subject you have to master, Sebastian is an expert on wine, I am an expert on wine, and neither one of us would say we know everything there is about wine. There's no way you can. And so what we pride ourselves on doing is exploring and enjoying. And we do the same thing, whether it's with wine, chocolate, cheese, cuisine, art, history. All of this is just a way of making your life richer. And you'll discover that if you pr approach wine tasting that way, not as a challenge, not as a test, but simply as if you were sitting back and listening to a great piece of music, only it's in your glass, you'll discover that even if you're not a huge fan of wine, you'll come home from this cruise saying, huh? That was really wonderful. If you don't, I'll be very disappointed because that's my job. 
Well, I have to say every time I mentioned this earlier that I've traveled with Paul and some of the other wine experts that have been mentioned, um, I, I've never felt intimidated. Um, and, and I love the fact that uh, the, the conversations, they kind of meet you where you are. Uh, but one of my favorite things is coming home with some little tidbits that I can use to brag with with all my friends when we go to a party. Oh, yes, I remember visiting such and such chateau. It was so much fun. You know, there's there are other aspects to it as well. But Paul, thank you for always making it fun. Uh, he has more stories than you could ever imagine. And I always learn so much, but we laugh so hard. It's a great time. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Thank you for making science in all of us. <laughs> but for me personally, also um, sitting together with like-minded people at dinner or at any of the meals and sharing all the stories of life, uh, it's it's one of the greatest gifts that I take home. In addition, of course, to, to the music that we are pouring in our glass. So, Paul, I mean, I I pick up some of your things the way you say it i think it's absolutely wonderful and um and really powerful so okay do we have time for one more question last one um if we are not able to do the full 28 nights uh could we book just a couple of the segments i know i kk you mentioned it earlier we are taking a wait list for shorter requests and um, we should be able to let you know by the end of November. Yeah, so that's short, quick answer. Anyone else who would like to say something about it? No, I think that's fantastic. Although yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm ready. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, same here. And uh, yeah, we are at the end of this beautiful sip and sail hour. Um, we don't have a toast prepared right now to finish it, but I would like to say that travel opens our hearts and our minds to so many different cultures in the world, to the most warm hearted, genuine people. And of course, so much history that we can travel down to all these centuries. Travel is a gift. It's time that we share together with our loved ones, with our family members, with our best friends, um, with our new friends, of course, because I know there are so many guests who come on board and come as a couple and leave as friends. And then they come again, time and time again. So I want to thank all of you, our travel advisor partners and friends and our guests for spending the hour together with us. We hope to welcome you all on board this beautiful, epic four week French immersion cruise on the different rivers together with Paul Wagner, who will be overseeing this cruise. I couldn't think about a better person than you, Paul, and again, Yes, we want to go for the food and the wine, but I would love to join you just for your stories and everything around, because I know every day will be a most memorable day together with you. And KK, thank you so, so much for joining us, for all your support over all these years, you, your team, uh, everyone there. And I really hope there will be a spot for both of us on this cruise, right? <laughs> So I have a, I have a I have a toast, Christina. Water separates nations, and wine brings people together. Ah, there we go. So so fitting. Thank you so so much. And same, Sebastian. It's always a pleasure over all these years. So here is to many many more happy and successful weeks, months, years to come, and to the heart of the river. And the story will continue. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers.